Have you ever wondered why a baby can learn to think in complex and abstract ways, but a dog cannot, even if they grow up in the same house? I have. Hello, my name is Apoorva, and I'm from the Department of Psychology here at Northwestern University. I'm interested in questions like this and others such as, why are we so smart? And what sets us apart from other species? To get to these answers, let me turn to a question. How is this drinking straw and plant stem similar? Well, on the surface, they're both green and they're both thin and long. But if we thought a little deeper, we could come up with the fact that they both help draw water up to the surface. For us, as adults, this comparison process probably didn't take too long. We have the benefits of shared systems, such as we speak the same language and we've all been in classrooms together. But can you imagine trying to ask a dog to do this? They simply cannot. But it's important to remember that this ability wasn't always this easy. Our ability to compare two distinct representations and draw similarities becomes stronger and easier as we grow older. So this same task for a child might be a lot harder. So from adults and dogs, let's go backward backwards to three-year-olds. This is an example taken from a research study done by my colleagues where they placed a card like this in front of the child and referred to it using a made-up name. So they said, this is a blicket. They then gave the child two more cards and asked, to choose, asked them to choose another card that was also a blicket. It turns out that when children are presented with just one example card, they were much more likely to choose card A since it contained the exact same object across both these cards. In this case, the black dog was a distractor and choosing card A was termed object focus. In order to answer the question, can children learn through the process of comparison, they gave the child two example cards and placed them next to each other. So they said, this is a blicket, and this is also a blicket. They gave them the same two choices that they'd seen before. Now their answers completely changed. So when children were given two example cards, they were much more likely to choose card B since it contained the exact same relation across all these cards. In this case, the relation is black animal above a white animal. Choosing card B was termed relation focus and this was exactly what the experimenters were going for. So kids learn to pick the relational answer when they're given two example cards to compare between. But the word blicket probably helped with this process too. So in order to answer the question, is this ability of relational comparison and abstraction a uniquely human one, or if it's dependent on language, we had to turn to someone even younger. But we all know that dogs can't speak a human language, right? So in order to make it a level playing field, we turn to someone even younger. So we turn to babies. At eight months of age, babies have not yet started to speak or communicate in a verbal language. So this gave us the perfect opportunity to answer the question, is relational comparison and abstraction a uniquely human one, or is it the fact that it arises from our ability to communicate in language? We all know babies as adorable little human beings who rely on caregiver support to function. But if they could write us an essay telling us about their vast and worldly experiences, it would make conducting research so much simpler for us. But since they can't, here's what we do. The babies come into the lab and are seated on a parent's lap facing a puppet stage. On the puppet stage, they see various objects dancing around. We measure the amount of time that they look at these objects. Babies, like adults, look at something when they find interesting, and when they get bored, they look away. So what do we show them? We show them multiple pairs of objects that are exactly the same as each other. Or in other words, we show them pairs of objects that share the relation of same. So they first see this pair until they get bored and look away. Then they see that pair, the third pair, and then the fourth pair. So for the record, half the babies see objects that share the relation of same, and the other half see objects that share the relation of different. 
But for the purposes of this presentation, I'll only be focus focusing on objects that share the relation of same. The gold standard in the field is that if we've truly learned and abstracted a relation, we should be able to apply it onto a pair of brand new objects that we haven't seen before. And this was exactly what we tested with the babies. We showed them two pairs of brand new objects that they hadn't seen before, one that shared the relation of same, like the two green blocks on the left-hand side, and one that shared the relation of different, like the foam tower and the pig on the right-hand side. We measured the amount of time that they look at each pair of objects. So the results of this study show us that if a baby has learned and abstracted this relation of same, and we show them pairs of objects that are brand new in the test phase, they tend to look much longer at objects that share the relation of different. So to summarize, eight-month-old babies can abstract the relation of same and different. If they've learned the relation of same, they tend to look much longer at objects that share the relation of different. And if they've learned the relation of different, they tend to look much longer at objects that share the relation of same. This shows us that it's not only language that makes us a smart and unique species, but it's also the fact that we have this amazing ability called relational comparison and abstraction that sets us apart from all the other species. Thank you. Thank you.